Hello guys, so in this video I want to continue my manifold series where I'm going to talk about how to show that a particular subspace of R3 is going to be a manifold. So let's take X in R3 where X is going to be a two-sheeted hyperboloid. So in other words, X is going to contain points X, Y, and Z where like that uh, shape is going to be described by a single equation which is X squared plus Y squared minus Z squared is equal to negative one. So to show that something is manifold, sometimes it's really beneficial to visualize your object. And since we have a shape which is going to be a subspace of R3, so let's sketch it. So to sketch that surface, let's rewrite our equation. Uh, and then what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my negative z squared and move to the right. So in other words, I'm going to obtain that x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared minus 1. Then let's do a small analysis. We can see that x squared plus y squared is always going to be non-negative. So that's why that means if I'm going to take my z squared minus 1, if I'm going to change my z between 0 and 1, unfortunately that expression is going to be strictly less than 0 if z is between negative 1 and 1. So that means like when your three-dimensional space uh, within like uh, that like interval z is equal to negative 1 and 1, I'm going to have no surface. But what is going to happen if I'm going to take for example z is equal to 1? When z is going to be equal to 1, and actually, let's take like plus minus 1. Then I'm going to obtain that x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to 0. So the only point which is satisfy uh, that equation is going to be exactly when x and y is equal to 0. So that that's why I'm going to obtain two points, 0, 0. Uh, plus minus one. And if I'm going to sketch them in three-dimensional space, I'm going exact. Uh, I'm going to get uh, the, uh, exactly those two points. And you can see right now what is going to happen if you're going to increase your z, for example, make z is to be equal to, let's say, square root of 2, then in that case, I'm, you're going to obtain that x squared plus y squared uh, is equal to 1. Yeah, so in other words, when z is equal, to, let's say, 2 plus minus square root of 2, I will have that x squared plus y squared, because square root of 2 squared is just 2, and 2 minus 1 is 1. But in that case, if I'm going to move slightly up or down, I'm going to have just uh, two circles of the radius 1. So I'm going to have circle on the top, and circle on the bottom. And right now you can see if I'm going to increase my z and make it bigger, bigger, and bigger, I'm going to obtain bigger and bigger circles. So that's why uh, that is going to be a shape of our one sheet parabola. And the same shape I'm going to have on the top. So that's why you can see why it's called like uh, two sheets because you literally have one piece on the top and another piece on the bottom. Okay, so now, right now, uh, if I want to show that something in a smooth manifold, what does it mean? Uh, actually, before I'm going to show smooth manifold, I'm going to just show that it's like a topological manifold. Uh, what do we need to show? We need to show that every time you're going to take any point on your surface and let's say, let's take like this point here. Then around your point, your space is going to look locally like an Euclidean space. And you can think about that as you're going to find a tangent plane at that point. And I have this orange uh, tangent plane. And if you're going to make this tangent plane really small, and if you're going to watch from the side, then you can see that tangent plane at your point is going to be really, really close to your surface. So locally, your surface is going to look like uh, a two-dimensional Euclidean space. So first, the most important property that we want to show, we want to show that x is locally Euclidean. Okay, I'm going to show this property in a second. There are like two other properties that I'm going to mention, but uh, we have those properties automatically because we consider that x is a subset of R3, it's second countability and Hausdorffness, but since R3 is second countable and Hausdorff, that means the subset of R3 is also going to be second countable in Hausdorff. So uh, I can explain those concepts like in my next videos, but let's right now focus on uh, uh, showing that X is locally Euclidean. So for that, let me actually give you the exact mathematical definition and let's check uh, the definition applies for this surface. So definition, I'm going to say that X is going to be locally Euclidean if every time I'm going to choose like some point P inside my set X. For that point, I can, there is going to be exist first the open subset of X, which is I'm going to call like U. So here remember that U is open in X. And there is going to be exist some open subset. And in this case, you can see that our surface is two dimensional. So that's why it's going to be exist some open subset V in R2. And what do we want to show? We want right now to show that, that U is going to be the same as our V. So and additional to those two open subsets, we're going to have a homeomorphism from U to V. So we're going to have homeomorphism uh, phi that is going to map from U. And remember, like, uh, 
I'm going to say that some map is homeomorphism if the following three properties holds that uh, first it's uh, continuous, the inverse is continuous, it's the second property, and the th uh, third property is that it's bijective. So this is going to be exactly the definition, what does it mean uh, for some space to be a local Euclidean. In other words, we can find the open subset of the space, which is going to be homeomorphic to some open subspace of, a, of, an Euclidean, of an Euclidean space. So let's right now produce such open subsets. So first, you can see that your surface contains uh, two pieces, top part and the bottom part. And what I'm going to show right now, I'm going to show that every time when I'm going to take the point for your top part, that the whole top part is going to be open uh, subspace itself. So in this video, I'm going to show for the top part, and you as a practice can do uh, the same, using, use the same approach to show that the bottom part is also going to be open subspace and is going to satisfy our definition. So let's just take some random point P here. And what, uh, what I'm going to claim, I'm going to claim that this top part, which I'm going to now indicate with a blue color, is going to be my U. But for that, let's first try to describe uh, exactly what is the U in that case. And also I need to show that U is open in X. So for the first part, let's try to describe my U. And you need to observe the following. If you're going to take the equation X squared plus Y squared minus uh, Z squared is equal to negative one, then you can think about top part of your surface as a function. Because you have your domain, which is x, y plane, and you just, every time when you're going to pick x and y, you're going to get a z component. So every time you're going to pick a point here, we're going to get component here. But if I'm not going to solve it for z, I'm also going to get some component for the bottom surface. But if right now I'm going to take that equation and solve it for z, or in other words, I will have that z uh, is equal to uh, plus minus square root of uh, x squared plus y squared plus 1. And since my z is going to be positive, this, so that's why I'm going to choose only positive uh, sign. So right now I have exactly the description of my u. So my u is going to be the following. It's going to be a subset which contains point x, y, uh, and z. But let's write z using our description. So in z in this case is going to be x square, square root of x squared plus y squared plus 1 in uh, R3. And right now I need to give some restrictions for my x and y. But you can see if you're going to visualize, if you're going to take the surface and just project onto x, y plane, then x and y in that case can be anything. So that's why uh, we're going to say that x and y are going to be all real numbers. Okay, so we're good with step number one. We found our u. So to figure out our b, Let's just uh, have like, uh, let's draw like that small picture. So if I'm going to have x, y plane and my one sheet parabola, as you can think as a parabola, which is shifted by one uh, to the top. And then the way how we're going to construct a manifold, as I said, like we're going to do a projection onto x, y plane, or in that case, projection into x axis. So that suggests for us that the space, the subspace of an Euclidean space that you want to have is going to be the actual Euclidean space itself. Or, or on that picture, you can see that if you're going to project it uh, down, then you're going to have the entire x axis. So in this case, that x axis is going to be exactly your v. So that's why let's choose our v to be just a set of points x, y in R2 where x, y can be any real number. So like conceptually, you can think of like deforming of one piece of uh, two sheets hyperboloid onto the xy plane. Okay, so we done with step number two. So we have uh, set u, which is a subset of x. We have set v, which is uh, r2 itself. And right now we need to check uh, these two things that both of those sets are open. So first, the second one is easy to check that v is going to be r2 itself. And we know that the whole space itself is open. So that's why v is open. Okay, let's show that the second set uh, sorry, the first set is open. Uh, so, in order like, to show that u open is x, by definition, what do we need to do? It's the same as saying that we can find, let's say, some open set uh, w in R3, such that if we're going to take the w intersect with our original set x, then we're going to get u back. And this is exactly like the criteria of some subset to be open in another subset of the bigger space. Uh, conceptually, let's come back to our parabola. You can see if you're going to have that blue parabola, then you're going to say is that that blue parabola is going to be open in the set of two parabolas, which is going to be on the top and another parabola is going to be on the bottom. As you can take W in that case, let's say, uh, just a small region, uh, which I'm going to draw right now, 
uh, which is going to be just this like I don't know like how to describe like line uh, which is going to be away from the blue graph by uh, uh, some epsilon where epsilon is strictly bigger than zero. Okay, and then you can see if you're going to take that orange region intersect with just the top part of the blue graph, then you're going to get our original parabola back. And since we're going to get our original parabola back, then that means that the uh, top part of our blue graph is going to be open. Using the same idea that we can just take uh, for our like uh, hyperboloid, one piece of the our hyperboloid, and just uh, surround it by, let's say, some cloud uh, which is going to be uh, away from the original piece by some epsilon, then that piece is going to be open. So that's why u is open. Okay, perfect. So right now we're done with our step number three. We found like two sets u and v, and we show that they are open. Our next goal is right now to find the homomorphisms from uh, set u to set v. Okay, and but the way how we constructed u and v, we can just kind of see what is going to be like our v in this case. So I'm going to define phi as a map from u to v. Uh, that is going to send point x, y, and z. And remember that we have descriptions for our z that, that is equal to square root to a point x, y. So right now we have our map and we need to check three, uh, three properties. That it's continuous, that f inverse is continuous, and uh, phi is bijective. So let's start with the third property, that it's bijective. To show that some map is bijective, it's enough to find its inverse and show to find some other map and that map is going to be inverse such that the composition of original function with that map or with that uh, function okay and to show the third property what do we need to do we just need to show there's another ways so first to show it's like one to one and on to but i'm going to use another approach that to show that some map is bijective it's enough to no find another map such that the composition of my original map and maps that i found is going to be equal to identity so in other words uh what i'm going to do i'm actually going to construct uh phi inverse where i'm going to show that phi composition phi inverse and you also can check that phi inverse composition with phi is going to be equal identity or in other words is going to be equal to x and my phi inverse is going to be a map from v to u and phi inverse is going to take two parameters x and y and what i'm going to get i'm going to kind of take a point here and produce point over there so that's why i'm going to obtain x y and square root of 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And let's do our computation. So let's compute uh, phi of phi inverse, let's say like, uh, oh sorry, no, it's not x. Uh, you can think about it point x. Uh, let's just change it to point, I don't know, like point p. Because that x and our original x is different. But we're going to apply to like, let's say s and t. Where s and t is going to be just some point in my v. And then I'm going to obtain that phi inverse is going to be uh, s t and square root of 1 plus s squared plus t squared. But if I'm going to apply phi map again, I'm going to just obtain first two components. So I'm going to obtain s and t. And you can see that we start with s and t and we ended up with s and t. So that's why I mean that composition is going to be identical. Using the same approach, you can show that phi inverse compo composition phi is also going to be the identity. So that's why we got the first property that phi is bijective. Okay, to show that we have uh, that phi is continuous, it just uh, observe what is the definition of phi. So phi is continuous because phi is going to be like... Uh, the vector function or like the vector function you have like the two outputs x and y and each of, of that output is continuous so that's why the original function is going to be continuous and the same works to phi inverse you're going to have a function where we're going to have three outputs x y and square root of one plus x or plus y squared but both but three of those functions are also going to be continuous so that's why we have that phi and phi inverse are continuous okay and we are done so what we did we constructed uh, the open sets u and v and also we found the uh, homeomorphism phi that maps from u and v and that's true every time I'm going to choose some point uh, p for the top part of my uh, uh, like from for my like sub let's call it like sub subspace but or like my surface but doing that we just show that the top at least the top part 
of my uh, two sheeted hyperboloid is going to be a manifold because again like every point is going to be has a local Euclidean neighborhood where then where the neighborhood in that case is going to be our set U itself. And using using the same idea, you can show that bottom part is also going to be uh, a smooth manifold. And since we have like two parts, then that those two parts are also going to be not a smooth manifold. Sorry, it's going to be a manifold. Then the whole thing is going to be a manifold. Since right now it doesn't matter when I'm going to choose my point P. Every time when I'm choosing the point. The top part is going to be given by, let's say, like U, and the bottom part is going to be given by some open set, and you can call it whatever you want. Let's call it now like A. Okay, and I'm done for this video. I really appreciate that you watching. Please ask uh, any questions, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, please subscribe, and see you soon.